A new tennis champion was crowned yesterday at the U.S. Open. Roger Federer won his third Grand Slam title of the year by defeating the 2001 U.S. Open champion, Leighton Hewitt. George Vesey of the New York Times described Roger Federer on the court as a fluid, complete artist. Here's a look at the winning point from yesterday's match. Roger Federer is the United States Open champion. He's won three of the four major titles this year. I am pleased to welcome Roger Federer to this table for the first time. And here is a trophy that he was holding up. Uh, has your name been ascribed on there yet? Not no, yet. Roddick last year. Um, everybody is talking about your game. I mean, they are saying, players are talking about your game, that they just want to watch you. I and mean, they're describing it as, a, you know, as beautiful as tennis can be. Memories of Jerry West and Joe DiMaggio and, and Michael Jordan from other sports. Uh, it's talked about as a kind of rare level of genius. When you hear all of that, um, what do you, is it, do you feel that your game is at a certain place that, that uh, you're not very expected it to be, or is it like no game um, that you have... Uh, actually, when I was young, I never thought I could play tennis the way I'm playing it right now. I, I always knew there was some hidden talent in me, you know, with, uh, with my strokes and with my, my style of play, but that I could actually explore it as much as I did now, it's, it's for me also a, a big surprise. And I think for me the key to really actually explore my whole potential uh, was actually improving my footwork because now that my footwork is always in place when I'm hitting my shots it looks even better and I can play shots where I think sometimes they're, they're lost but I can still get them back you know that kind of makes the sometimes the important points. I'll tell you what I did yesterday because I was sitting I was sitting on the side right on the sidelines you know maybe about halfway between the between the net and and the backcourt a couple of rows up mm -hmm. and so what i would do is just watch your footwork so, and it was just amazing i mean tell me what it is about footwork that you do that makes it so easy for you well for me important is actually that my footwork doesn't meet, need to be you know in the limelight my, my the, what is going to be in the limelight is anyway my talent my fluid style mm -hmm. and so forth and, and when nobody speaks actually about my footwork this is a good sign. It means it's working. Exactly, it's a good sign. And th that's always what I've been uh, working on. Um, I knew that there, in this area and in the mental area, I had the most progress to do and m the most potential left. And uh, since now, basically one and a half years, I've, I've had such an outstanding and consistent... Yeah. And, and in the mental, is it simply confidence that you can do it or, or more? Well, mental it means, you know, every day coming out of your bed and being ready to go and uh, um, winning matches when you're not playing well. Um, it's, it's easy to win when you're playing well, but when you're not feeling well, you know, this is, this is very difficult sometimes to actually get the motivation up and say, okay, let's do it, you know, today. And uh, I guess the whole experience of gained by winning all these big tournaments obviously helped me in the finals like yesterday. When you make an unforced error, what generally causes it? I would say usually because uh, my footwork's not in place, you know. Either, you know, because the opponent pushed me too hard, because I'm tired, because I uh, took too much risk or whatever. It can be different things, but usually it's the footwork because you can't get your body behind the ball. And then, you, then it's yeah. kind of a little bit luck if it goes in or not. Shall we try it right through? Won't you sit down, Mr. Gordon?
heaven, my dear, sheer heaven. Is she still fine? Heavenly, it certainly is. But such analogies, delightful as they might be, don't really explain what the footwork is all about. Like so many things in tennis these days, the term footwork remains rather ill-defined. It is shrouded in ambiguity and means different things to different people. To do anything well, we must first of all be very clear on what exactly that thing is which we are trying to do. Only then, we can hope for being able to do it intelligently. When it comes to tennis, we should try to understand what causes, triggers and drives all that seemingly incomprehensible commotion better known as footwork. So, with that goal in mind, let's examine what footwork is made up of and start with listing everything your feet must do in order to earn their keep. Ultimately, this list can be boiled down to four major chores or tasks, which will encompass the entire ball striking cycle. Chore number one. Getting to the spot where the actual striking of the ball will take place. The trip to that location will vary. It can be as short as a single step. Or it can be painfully long. It might require you to move forward. sideways or even backward one way or another the quicker you get there the better chore number two planting down of the feet and placing the body into the proper firing position from which the striking action can be comfortably executed. Chore number three. Pushing off the ground, thrusting the torso, and generating the necessary momentum, which in turn will propel the arm into the swing. And last but not least, the chore number four. Getting back to the location from which this whole cycle can be repeated all over again. These four chores or stages are the building blocks of all good ball strikers' footwork patterns. Notwithstanding, some unavoidable overlapping they are distinct and are seamlessly interlaced into a continuous pattern, which is interrupted only by the end of the point. They are the backbone of the reliable ball striking. If anything, the good ball striking depends not on the good hand and eye coordination, as we are constantly told, but rather on the good eye and leg coordination, a seemingly far fetched concept which could be hard to swallow.
Everything starts from the ground up. So when I went to hit a forehand, the first thing I thought about, like a boxer, you're moving your feet, you're moving your feet, and as soon as you go to punch, you have to get set. So that's how I would approach it. Footwork, footwork, footwork. Right before I go to swing at the ball, my foundation gets set. The notion that the footwork's role is limited strictly to hauling you around the court is misleading and patently wrong. But this insidious idea is so deeply entrenched in all quarters and many of mine's that, for example, here, Andre, in his description, unwittingly, I am sure, segregates the footwork into a category of its own, making it appear somewhat different from the act of striking itself. By saying that out loud, inadvertently, he drives this notion deeper, even into his own mind. So, on this particularly rare occasion, you might be better served by emulating what the master actually does, and not what he says. This particular stroke is an excellent example where all four chores are clearly defined and are being executed with an impeccable timing. But here, the momentum of Andy's torso was created not by the push, but rather by his sprinting during the initial stage. And this is exactly the same kind of stroke executed with a total lack of coordination between the feet and the rest of the striking mechanism. The outcome speaks volumes. And now Vika is pressing. Every time she gets a short ball, she's trying to overhit it too. I do hate to step on Steffi's toes, not only because of her standing and for the fear of appearing catty, but because she does move so gracefully and her feet are very lively. But despite all that, I cannot help but notice that her footwork seems to lack a discernible structure. She seems to be landing randomly on a different foot for the same kind of strokes. She does not distinctly push off the ground but often slides or drags her feet right through her strokes, which makes her footwork appear chaotic and somewhat aimless. And this little piece of footwork could put even Roger the Great himself to shame so sit back relax and watch those feet work <laughs> 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 